Alrighty. We are back. All right. This is the uh, second part in our series on clay. Last time we uh, looked at all the data structures, got through the entire state of clay, and uh, that touched on a little bit of everything that happens in clay, which is great. In these next couple parts, we're going to go and try to dive into each area uh, in as much detail as we can. Um, the place we're going to start today is uh, individual reads. So the, the, the general areas of clay that we'll go through eventually will be individual reads, subscriptions, subscriptions over the network, um, Ford writing to clay with park merges. And then a few other things like, um, uh, sync with Unix and, uh, maybe some more about tombstone management, um, as that evolves. <coughs> But yeah, and our thought is that we're going to do this bottom up. We were just talking about this before yeah. the episode. But, um, uh, so all of this is going to kind of culminate in looking at uh, the park arm, which is what handles commits. Uh, but it's kind of a long and complex function and a bit tough to read without knowing what it's calling into. And so we're going to go through the different um, sort of uh, modules of clay that are uh, that are orchestrated by Park. Uh, go through those first because um, they're sort of smaller and more self-contained and easier to to learn. But that's what yeah. we're building up to. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Park should be should be an exciting one. The other thing that's changed. We, go ahead. Just thought we'd give away the you know. That would give away the, the ending there. You know, I had I had a bunch of uh, lecturers in college who would they would not say what it is that they would be heading toward. So that you know, you'd get into the, the lecture hall and they'd start writing some system on the board. So say you know suppose you have a, you know a thermal reservoir and then you have this thing connected to it. Well, and they just kind of launched into it, and then at the end you know uh, an hour and a half later they'd say. And surprise, you get to this result, you know, some theorem or whatever it was. But they would never bother saying why it is that one should pay attention to them during that time. And uh, I, I always thought that was a really frustrating uh, way to teach people. So I try not to do that. Yeah. I think it, it if, if your goal is to help someone understand an area really well, uh, very often just like, yeah, if, if they can put it on a map, then I don't know. It's it's much easier to keep yourself oriented. If you know where. Yeah, you're going. exactly. Yeah. Um, the other thing has changed since last week is the uh, object store looks significantly simpler because instead of this being a map of lobe to blob where a blob could be direct or delta or whatever. Um, now it's a lot map of lobe to page, which is something we discussed last week as like, maybe we should do eventually, but here's some very good reasons why we shouldn't do it right now. Um, <laughs> which, uh, oh, well, done. Um, <laughs> the, the danger of uh, actually looking at the code. Danger of looking at the code and talking about it in, in too much depth is, you might I realize it. it's not yeah. that hard to fix. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm very pleased that you fixed that. Uh, I think it's a yeah, the the diff on that is very clean and very nice, and it just makes a lot of questions go away, which is it, which is always. It's one good. of those like does you know, make it do what it says on the on the tin, sort right? Of things as a, as Paul Dictantag always used to say. His dad it's like yeah. Now. So our our hash address store is a map from hash to data. It's like okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> next subject <laughs> exactly exactly 
Yep. All right. Then let's jump into reads. Um, going to assume you have some familiarity with uh, with like what reads look like in clay, but not not that much. We're going to end up going through pretty much everything in it, so maybe maybe I'm not actually assuming it. Um, but yeah, uh, I mean, I I personally know this code pretty decently. I've had to modify it a few times. Um, but, um, yeah, the, uh, the listener at home may not. Right. Um, yeah. So th there's a, like two basic ways that we tend to read files out. One is we'll scry them out and the other is we'll, uh, we'll use a move, a warp move. Um, they, they, they converge very quickly so we can look at both of those paths just to, so that we convince ourselves, okay, if once we understand this, we understand how you read files or read anything from Clay. Um, so the version that goes via move is you send a warp and you'll get a writ back. Um, a warp takes a ship for whose Clay you're reading off of. A riff, which is a desk name, and then a request or if it's null then that means uh cancel the request um the request itself is a rave which we looked at some last time because it's very similar to the subscription that's stored uh in our state uh although it doesn't need to be a long list subscription very often it's just a singular request for a mood mood is a care case and path and that's really what a request looks like it's ship desk care case path that like describes a piece of data in a reference transparent way and so on um, and, uh, no one explained what a what a care is here yeah so all, all that should be bird. pretty obvious except for case is a version which could be either a date a label or a number we'll see how 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 those get um, like unified into a single concept uh, when we look at the code. The other item here, though, is a care, um, and there's not a great like natural description of, of of a clay mode. Is a term we'll we'll use for that sometimes. Um, I would say it's a, you know it's a request type, right? Like it's this, a request it's type, a yeah. Name of a right. Um, so if if you're looking at a path. In clay there's potentially various things you might want to know about it you might want the data that's at that path that's going to be send x so like add a, a hoon file if you do send x you'll get back a chord that has the hoon file um you might want to know you like be treat you might want to treat this path as a directory and say does it have any children well that's going to be uh send y is going to give you a list of its children and whether or not there's also a file at that path. Because remember in Clay, a path, every path can be a file or a directory or both. Um, you might just want a hash of it, uh, including all of its children. That's what SendZ gives. And there's a bunch of others that uh, we'll, we'll go through. Um, SendU is just, does this, does a file exist there at all? and so on um so when we look at it at a request um you want to say what kind of data you want about that path that's the care what version and what is the path so that's how a read request can come in by um by a move and in clay the handling of that is simple you get a warp uh warp is very similar except it's um when you receive it over the network so there's a little bit of handling there to say if it's if we if we got it over the network then we want to record who requested it uh so that we can determine whether they have permissions to read what they requested um and then we just call well if it's null we call cancel request Otherwise, we call start request, 
which this is let's see so first thing it does is checks uh it it says if this is for another ship is this the kind of request we can send over the wire there are some we can and some we can't um based on the on the care um ones we can't are basically are mostly anything that's too big uh, or like code so like send a says build this file and produce the you know the knock of the result and we we can't send that over the wire because well in theory you could but we don't have any way to validate that or anything and so we don't let them don't let it happen um as long as that's not the case then we go ahead and try and do the read which actually it looks like it does go straight into the subscription machinery but the subscription subscription machinery quickly ends up in um basically it says if we don't have any other information about this then we we call read at eon that's where we're gonna meet up with the scry stuff um We'll go through th this section in, in, in more detail later, but the, but the important part here is you, you're making a sing request. First step you do always is case to Eon, and then you make a, 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 a and then you try to read at that Eon. So uh, Eon is the numbered revision, um, and. So we, we never want it to be the case that, you know, if, if you, have, you have a commit today, commit next week, then you make a request about today, make a request about tomorrow, the next day, those should all give exactly the same answer no matter what, no matter what path you're in, no matter what care you're in. It, it, um, everything resolves to an eon before we, before we try to fill any subscription or fill any request. Um, the way to yeah, do so it's basically like yeah. you can ask all these different things, right? You can ask for a file by date. You can ask for a file at a label, which is sort of like a git tag or release, right? Um, mm -hmm. uh, but internally, the first thing Clay does is say, okay, we're actually going to figure out which revision number that corresponds to, and then we can figure out how to answer the query. Right. Right, exactly. It's a, it's a clean layer on top of it like before you get to anything else. Um, it happens in the natural way, which is, um, if you gave it an Eon, then it'll generally just produce that Eon. Uh, it, it will actually produce null if you give it an Eon in the future, right? So if the top revision is N and you ask for N plus five, it's going to give null, uh, in this context. Yeah. Null meaning, I don't know how to answer that yet. Or I guess, no, null here is just. No, there is no Eon that we have at the moment that corresponds to this case. Right. And then we can we can change that answer later if we do if we get up to that Eon. Right. Like so if somebody the, us, yeah, yeah. Right. So that's the same answer we give if you request for a label that doesn't exist. So we just do get by our yeah. labels and that should you know, which if you remember gives us an Eon. Um if label doesn't exist, that means null, that means this case might exist at some point in the future, but it doesn't exist right now. And w when it does, presumably you're going to call this again and recognize, oh yeah, the label exists. Now I can fill that subscription. Um, but if you if you need it right now, that's not going to work. Um, and so, yeah, that's how labels are handled. Dates uh, work in like th there's like two or three different ways you could do it. This is, I think, the most natural way. Um, First of all, you, so I uh, glided over, uh, case to Eon is, is actually, you, you call this function with lim as the, the like limit date. So if you remember in reads, we have this concept of a, of a limit date that says for a foreign ship, uh, or for, for a, a desk on a foreign ship, we have all the information up to a certain date, which is usually, which is going to be some time in the past. 
and we can answer any request up to that date. Beyond that, we don't know the answer right now. You'd have to go ask them. Uh, for local desks, this is always going to be now. So we have that concept. If, if you request the date after that, which for a local one is after now, then we don't know what revision number that's going to be. Otherwise, we start from the top. So where's in yeah. 1236 there, case to Eon? Yeah. Uh, where is the limb coming from? This coming from somewhere in the core that we're in? Yeah, so that, so uh, plus D is, is the core that we're in. Virtually everything in clay is in this core. And um, it, it's the, the, the idea of D is, is you're uh, specializing to a particular ship and desk. It could be local, could be foreign, but it's a particular ship and desk. Um, and so we put a read in our state of this core, regardless of whether it's local or foreign. And so if, if it's, uh, it's just foreign, if it's foreign read. then yeah. sorry say again yeah so okay so the so in case to eon that limb is coming from the the read that we have in our um in our core here and uh that's for a foreign desk that's going to be you know the latest date that we've heard from that ship and then for a local desk, that's going to be out, uh, now. Is that right? Uh, yeah, yeah. So, so if it's a local desk, we say get it by there, bunt it if it doesn't exist. But limb is always going to be now. For for a foreign right. one, it'll be whatever's in. So this is another gut buy. So get whatever's in uh, our state for it, uh, defaulting to the bunt of of Pat Da. Um, which will always be before any orbit started, so it works. Oh, yeah. right. Yeah, that's a funny, funny hack, actually. Yeah, it's, you know, what is the default date? I don't know. What's year zero? Yeah. Um, yeah, so that's where that comes from. So then if you're looking for, for a particular date, uh, what we do is we start at the end. Um, so this is, is mostly done this way so that if anything crashes, you get some nice printouts. But um, you, and it shouldn't ever crash. Um, so you start at the uh, most recent revision check and see is the date that we're looking for greater than that than that if so then you found it um, so for example if the most recent revision is n and it happened yesterday and we're looking for today then well today's after yesterday so we found it um, if not then you know, so most re we're actually looking for stuff from a month ago, and most recent revision was yesterday. Okay, let's recurse by going to the previous revision. So look at the n minus one revision. That's from a week ago. S still wrong, so we recurse again. Uh, that one's from two months ago. We want it from one month ago, so that one's correct. Um, yep. Yeah. So the asymptotics aren't like wonderful here, but they're also yeah, not degree. You could use an and... order map, and it'd be better, and it would be better asymptotics, but. It's right. Fine. And then also the other thing that makes this okay is that there's a pretty strong assumption that you're almost always going to be looking at recent stuff. Um, yeah, usually. So the further back the go you go, um, like you know, this this is what something like roughly n log n and how how many commits back you look, which you know would take a while to get high enough to be noticeable probably. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And at least a good direction where, like, if you're looking at recent stuff, it's pretty quick. Right. Um, yeah, and it has the answer to... Uh, so one, one question is, what happens if you have two commits that... Um, who, whose dates sort of don't match the ordering that you expect? So uh, one version of that is two commits at the same date. Which can happen if you you know you're running a thread and it happens to just do two separate commits at the same date. 
Um, this will find the second one of those. Uh, right. Because it's approaching right. it from further in the future. Yeah. Yeah. Just the first one that matches when, as you're going backward in time. Right. Yeah, that makes sense. Right. And you can, there's nothing preventing Clay from doing two commits in the same Arvo event, in which case they'll both happen right. at the same date. And like, yeah. that's legal. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, there, there's a reasonable argument to be made that maybe, maybe it should get the first one just because it feels maybe a little bit more referentially transparent, but eh, mm, it's not. I don't think so. Oh, I guess um, it depends on how you interpret. Because it's well, like I mean, now yeah, you've it bound it, now you rebound the request for the current date to be a different commit. It's kind of weird. Well, it it depends on how you do it, right? So if you if we say that the um, like one way to get referential transparency for Scry is to take the Scry handler and pin it to the, at the beginning of every Arbo event, right? Right. Uh, well, if if you do then, that, then yeah, then, then neither of them, then neither commits within this event show up within this event, right? Like if you ask for right uh, something at this date, then you know, all you have is the old scry handler, which doesn't know whether there's anything at this date or yet or not. Yeah, um, I mean, you, you would need to interpret that beyond just the scry handler. Uh, these would need to be uh, like th th this would need to be strictly greater than. Which yeah, is fine, right? But yeah. Yeah, um, and then, uh, but then you know later, if you ask about well, what about the commit happened at that particular date, or then the, uh, I think you would sort of spiritually at least want to answer with the second one, right? Like, how many commits? Or like, what's the latest? That how what, you know, how far did you get by this this date? Um, yeah and then yeah because i think that that can more coherently answer the question of like well i don't know maybe it's arguable i guess um yeah yeah i don't know i i could see it going either way um this is the it's probably the simplest uh like the, the implementation is the simplest with these semantics so seems fine yeah for now And then, yep. but if you if you scry into clay um, with a dot cat, let's say, yeah, right now, right, the way it's implemented right now, if you scry into clay at the current date, um, this actually will show you the latest commit, even if it happened in this event, right? Yes, that's correct. Which, well, so, like, I right. mean, th that's which, like, that, that's a violation, even just as, as it is, even if you don't have two commits going through or something like that. Because right. if you scry, then commit, then scry all within the same event, you're going to get two different answers uh, if it's for the yeah, current okay. so date, which is wrong. So that's a that's a flaw in the current implementation, right? Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So that was case to Eon. Um, pretty simple. That was in try fill sub where we were trying to see if we can fill this. Uh, if we got null out of it, then we produce it as, as a subscription instead of, uh, trying to handle it directly. But otherwise we have an Eon and we do call read it Eon. Um, and that's where we do all our reads. Um, Real quick, uh, we'll look at the scry stuff and it'll terminate at read at Eon as well. So a scry in general, we parse stuff out of it. We check for like, is this the mass scry? Um, yeah, mass scry. Uh, there's a couple of other special cases that we handle that are really not important. Um, we also fill in this concept of who is who is scrying this out, which historically hasn't made a lot of sense because you can't scry over the network 
but content distribution might fill this incorrectly, actually, uh, or it might not because it kind of breaks your caches, so it probably doesn't. Um, but there's logic for it. Yeah, I think I think it does not pass that in. Yeah, basically we have a different yeah. Like the the, the, the model for that is in kind of distribu distribution is intended to be uh, it just comes back as encrypted data and you pass the keys around separately, right? Uh, it's actually the step here where basically um, it's you assume that uh, anyone can ask for a path or if you're at a path or the network or using any urban ship at least. Yeah. Um, can ask for data path, and you'll, um, in general, they'll be able to get it. You know, you might decide not to run a complex query from like a comet or something, right? If you, uh, I mean, ideally, right, you have some sort of basic cost protections to protect, protect your resources so you don't run computationally expensive error costs. Right. But you can also just do it with a not. So you, you could do that sort of heuristically in the runtime. Uh, but, uh, in general, you know, people will be able to see um, describe request packets and share response packets. Uh, and so, another is a um, everybody is a logical broadcast network, right? So, so anybody right. has to, be able to see the packet to be okay. Um, you don't want to have to rely on packet never showing up at, to an adversary in order to you know, know that they can't see the data. And so, right. yeah, if you want your play data to be only uh, available to, say, a small set of ships, and what you do is um, get the key uh, for this data and distribute that the, that key only to uh, that set of ships. Uh, right. And you use the key both to encrypt and to encrypt the response. Um, so, um, so that you could you could only decrypt the files if you know the key, but even uh, even if you can't encrypt the files, you also can't um, decrypt the request for the path, so that you don't even know what's being asked for. Because otherwise, you can still right. get some of the data, right? Because like, let's say that you know some file contains a unit, right? It's either null or it's data, and like if you know what file is being asked for, then you can get the result. You yeah, have just looking at how big it is. You can tell whether it was null or not. Right. right. So you'd still be able to exfiltrate information through the through right. basically metadata. Um, so yeah. So so we encrypt both the request and the response. But that means that you know anybody can ask for that encrypted request. Right. Anybody can make that encrypted request. So you're not really branching directly off of who's asking. Um, right. It might be reasonable to to pass in the ship name just just as a um, like a layer of not even DOS protection because that's really from well it's it, it like basically the the idea would be if a remote scry comes in for something that's kind of expensive to get but not super expensive to get um, yeah and you know that this person doesn't have permissions for it then maybe you don't even want to do it if it's gotten all the way to here right if, if it's in some if it's in your runtime cache mm -hmm. runtime cache can just respond or an intermediate cache they can just respond so it's not like a safety thing it's more just like I don't yeah know. yeah i'm not sure because the on the other side of that it's like um you know joe joe wishes for this a lot and i think he's right to push for it that um we want to be able to support through arbitrary clients doing scribes. Um, and so, you know, one could imagine not having any permissioning. Um, now, maybe you only want to have, you know, a non-permissioned access to, like, the real-time scry cache, right? And then you don't even get to run and knock unless you're set, right? That's one security approach you might take. Um, I mean, yeah, you but, you could make sure that I don't know. I I think at some point we're we're gonna want to say that, yeah, you can have some random client 
make requests over remote scry that's not even really an urban, but it needs a moon key. Yeah, right. That's the other... That's it basically needs... how the design so far. Or like, yeah, you do right. need to actually indicate the request so that the, the publisher has an opportunity to discard unauthenticated right. requests, right? Or, right. And to, and, to do, and to attribute faults, right? So if it's getting... Right. Tons of packets in from the ship, it could be like, all right, I'm not going to listen to that ship. Yeah, I mean, they need to make sure you have a genuine copy of Urbit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. We'll just uh, we'll pull up every, every 10 minutes until you have to get every copy. Exactly. Looks like you're running a comet. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> okay. So. Um, there is this path that says, well, if you make a request with the Senex care at the empty desk for right now, then we'll give you like our object store or the set of domes, which is just uh, convenient stuff for generators mostly so that you can... Um, so that you can produce the kinds of requests that you want to be able to produce automatically. It's kind of disorganized. It needs to be thought through a little more. But um, that exists. And everything else goes through this call, which we virtualize. Uh, oh, sorry, what is this in? This is for domes, is that right? No. I'm what does... Sorry, so if you're making the care... Oh, no, this is just the desk is in book. Yeah, yeah. So this is if if you make a dot cat request for like a send cx where the desk is is null, so like faz tis yeah. faz faz tis, um, right. and the date is right now, which is what we need to make this referentially transparent. So you, so you can't request this in the past or anything like that. Uh, then see, you can yeah. get the current uh, object store or the current. A set of domes, which that's uh, just, okay. So, this is yeah. for requests that are not linked to a particular disk, yeah. It, it right, it's basically requests that are not limited to a particular desk, and so don't have a coherent concept of a version or anything, right? It's just, we're trying to get that. some of the plays internals that. out so that we can so that we can operate on yeah. something either faster than by doing the, the individual scries because you know, it might be that you're um. Uh, like with some of the, the tombstoning stuff, we use this because it's like, okay, I want to identify every place where this file is used. And so I need to go through each desk on each ship and each revision inside that desk and each one of its parents and check if each file is this file. Um, and if you do it with scries, it's really, really slow. If yeah. you do it directly, it's uh, it's fast and it's easier to read too. You know, yeah, it's slow if you do one scry per desk, but which is what you would have to do otherwise. Uh, it wouldn't be one right. scry per desk. It would be one scry per like file. Like, oh, it, okay, yeah. It would be many, many thousands of right. scries now per desk. Scry, yeah, and the scry overhead right now is guys, so don't do it. Yeah, yeah. It's and much, even if yeah. overhead down, it's really, you know, if you're scrying from user space, it'll probably always be something akin to contact switch. And right, so it'll probably never be quick. Yeah, I mean, at some point we're gonna have to think about okay, should user space be allowed to scry out these internals of clay? What if this, you know, should, should the dojo yeah. always have access to everything in clay? Well, maybe, but also maybe it should pop up a permissions oh, box. Be. There's all kinds of things that can happen here, but it's it's really just done yeah. this way for convenience. Yeah, probably want to have like a diagnostics permission. Yeah. So we might yeah. yeah, which is like read Ask everything. Orders. Maybe you can't write to everything, but at least read everything. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. And so then, if it's not that, if it's a normal request, then we call a ver, we call it virtualized. If it crashes, then we print the crash because you can't produce a crash as part of a scry result um 
and produce null. Null, of course, in scry means we don't know what that data is or whether it will even exist. Null, null, we might have gotten from a ver and would mean we know what that data is, it is nothing, or else we know what that data is and it is something, in which case we just produce that. Shouldn't it just be default? Um, yeah, it can just be PDR result now. Um, but I don't know. It can honestly, <laughs> yeah. Uh, when did this happen? Oh, right. Cause it used to be, um, oh, you said, so like the first two it, cases, it used deep, to be and then instead of, unit, unit, instead of, each load yeah. cage is what it was. And so we yeah. had to handle this case separately, but we don't anymore. I see. And so, yeah, it should just okay. be our result. There we are. Did that change the uh, making it map, making the object sort from load to page? No, it changed um, during some refactoring I did in November in the very beginning of the tombstoning project. It's not really necessary for tombstoning, but I was looking at this and I was like, this is a mess. The lobe to cage thing we can just do directly in, like we can just do that directly where the lobes are produced because it's all in clay now. Uh, before it was in uh, clay, it what would happen is you would get an answer back and then you'd have to send that off to Ford. Ford would give you the response back uh, at, like asynchronously, which was a mess, but worked right. surprisingly well. It was another reason why the onc cache was so important back then was so that a scry would actually work because scry would never really work if you are if you had to asynchronously call forward. So uh, it just worked less often. You had to it, be like, okay, if it's not for the current revision, I need to, uh, I, I need to send it as a warp instead of as a scry. Um, and that's, that's somewhat better now. Yeah, but, so that's so why Onk is there. To a so. significant degree, I mean, it, like, it feels like yes, but also Onk predates Ford, so I don't know. But, like, yeah. that that was a, a way in which it was very load-bearing it, where it's not a, anymore for that reason. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting. I didn't know that. Yeah. So, right. So here we called a, a ver um, with the, you know, who was for and the mood, which is, you know, starting to look like the, the warp, right? The warp was a riff with a rave. Rave has a mood in it. Um, and this first checks whether it was in our simple cache, um, which is what we described last time, um, where... If you if you make a request like for example a send x request over the network, the answer gets cached, and so. Um, yeah, and this is probably drawing indefinitely. Yeah. Um, yeah. But you know, if we make the request again, we'll respond to it immediately, even if it is over the network, or even if it was originally yeah. over the network, the scry will actually resolve. Um. Yeah. And, you know, actually, I to yeah. Be getting. Um, getting those kinds of doing clear thing for outgoing fire requests, right? Where basically, like, instead of you know, if I request, if I make outgoing fire requests for you know some data on some other ship, um, and I do that as a remote scry request, like, should that sort of hairpin through local clay first, right? Seen. I've been pronouncing it wrong. Um, <laughs> the, uh, uh, well, yeah, we, we have a uh, habit of mispronouncing, uh, uh, I mean, like jail, right? It should be jail. Yeah. I don't know if Bane is correct, uh, but it might be. Yeah. Uh, but anyways, yes. Um, <laughs> yeah. As traditional pronoun. Um, uh, yeah, so Fine, uh, maybe, maybe that could if you have to find the data before making the request, that you just turn around and ask, hey, but, hey, but do you have it? <laughs> right, last little thing. Uh, but yeah. it really depends on who's making the request, really, because if it's only, now it's only the, that 
originates from a scrap glass, which won't always be the case, but yeah, it's something to about later. It's like, should we try that? Or put the wrong layer. Um, I mean, it's possible that the remote scrap request will go by, uh, well, like, it, it's possible that the remote scrap request should go to Clay, and then Clay sends it to Fine. Um, and then, you know, Clay could itself just check that's its hash. Right. That just cache. works right now, more or less. Right? But basically, and then yeah. we wanted that not just for Clay, but also for Paul. Right. And so, right. yes, that's a different factoring of how remote scribe works that you do it. You know, Gene would, would know how to fetch and cache its own, you know, data from other instances itself and other steps. Right. Yeah might be sensible yeah so something to keep in mind as we go forward yeah some some kind of hairpinning one way or another is probably a good idea yeah all right so we check the simple cache if it has it we produce it otherwise we do this horrible hack otherwise um, <laughs> which is basically if you scry for send late this is where like the the read buck thing from before is like kind of a mess, but at least it's an honest mess. This is a dishonest mess <laughs> and should should be factored into read buck instead. Uh, it, it says basically if you scry for uh, a care of sent s, which is the miscellaneous care for right. any numbered version uh, where the path starts with send late, then we will give you the last revision number that we currently have for that desk unrelated to the revision that you requested of course um mm -hmm. it's just what we currently have for this which is which is a useful thing to ask it's a useful it's a thing you might want to know it's a thing that uh kiln needs to know to know whether it needs to download stuff um it's a thing you might want to display in your um uh, it's something you need for less vats right to, to say to get its uh, base hash and stuff, you just want to be like, okay, what's the most recent version we have for this foreign ship? If it's a local ship, you can just ask what's the most recent one. But for this, it's like, well, if I ask for like now, then it's going to be like, I don't know about now. I'm, I'm not them. I need to do a scry. Yeah, like, I, I need to go over the network. And it's like, no, I just want to know what's right. the best effort, right? Yeah, although, yeah, it, it, there's a problem where this is not referentially transparent, right? right. And so you could... You could limit it to request at the current date, right? And you put the numeric case right. of what you're asking about in the path, um, and that right. way. Well, except um, we're not even asking about a case, so yeah, yeah. It, it really should just be at the current date. Right. Actually, here you potentially even could do that. But then but it's, if it doesn't. Then it's like you know our what's our understanding at this date of some other thing, right? And that like right. you know our understanding can be referentially transparent even if like our understanding changes over time it's like any given right. time our understanding was something and see so there's right. a a referentially transparent request to be made there um right but, but yeah, it shouldn't be sort of it shouldn't request. be it's yeah. not actually about their ship yeah like like you say and so right. re is ship, is the appropriate new, yeah. place for that yeah so that should move over it is not the last thing that it is not the last hack worth you're going to see here. Um, but yeah, it says what? zero if it doesn't exist. Why, is it, why does it belong in rebuck just because it's limited by to the current date? Or I mean, this is the desk, so it doesn't fit into read in that way. Well, eh, but it's not within a. It's it's sort of about them, but like, it's certainly not like they wouldn't agree with your answer. Oh, um, well, it's not for death, really, is it? Right, because it's it's like somebody else's desk. We're we're uh, asking for a part of our happens. subscription state. Or we're asking for the current state of a cache, is what we're doing. And it's like it's our cache, yeah. not their cache. Right. Yeah, I don't know. I, yeah, I, and I, like, at the very least, it needs, it needs to be DNA now. Anymore. But go ahead. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. Because historical query is about this. Like, we could track an information, but who cares? Right? right. Who cares if we used to know some spy path? Like, it's not interesting. Um, 
So yeah, you want to look at the date. Yeah, it's sort of depending on it's sort of a matter of notation whether it's uh, our desk or somebody else's because it's really like our state about somebody else. We sort of always in one sense, but in another sense, it's not because if we actually have you know, data from some other ship, then like you know, we can generate, you know, we can actually handle those scribes because we have the raw data that we need. Um, and we would handle, we know that we'd handle it the same way that they would. Right. Yeah. Cool. Um, right. So that's that hack. But for any normal request, we call case to Aeon, which we looked at before. Otherwise, we do, you know, and if, if that's null, of course, we produce null, which means we don't know. We don't know whether we have this, whether this data exists. Don't know anything about this data. Um, this all uh, ha threads through a Ford cache because you, uh, there is another entry point to a ver, um, which can save the Ford cache. Scry itself cannot save the Ford cache, but we keep track of it. Um, and then we call read at Eon, which is where the warp direction terminated. So, yep. if you used warp or you used scry, either way, we resolve to this. And this is the fundamental, I want to read some data arm. And it's potentially for a foreign ship. It's at a particular eon. We're already within the context of a ship and a desk because we're in the D core. Um, and it has a mood. So it's a care, case, path. Uh, don't read the case out of there. <laughs> Use the Aeon. I didn't realize that you could even get the case out of there, but I guess you can. Really, it's the care and the path that you're reading out of the mood. Um, we produce, you know, apart from an updated Ford cache, unit, unit cage, as we talked about before. We talked about the unit, unit part. It's a cage because that's... Um, we sort of talked about the unit, unit part, but for, for people, you know, listening... If you yeah. don't know, um, the, the Herbert's, we're redoing a read for Herbert's scry namespace here. And um, there are three kinds of answers that you can get. One is null, which means I'm not answering. Uh, and the ship can always switch between answering and not answering. Um, and that's always whenever it feels like it. Um, and second, uh, is that you have null, null, pair of null, null, which means I am going to answer your question, and the answer is there's nothing there. Uh, and then the third is, and that can't change. I mean, it can change between not an answer and not an answer, but it can't switch between uh, having a piece of data there and not having a piece of data there. Once there's not a piece of data there, there will always not be a piece of data there. Um, and the third answer is uh, that you actually have uh, you know, triple of null, null, cage, uh, where a cage is... Uh, a piece of data with um, a couple different kind of type tags on it. Um, and uh, so then, yeah, it's also uh, because it's an immutable namespace, once you get an answer that has, that has this cage, uh, you never replace that with a different cage, and you can never replace it with uh, null, meaning that there's nothing there. There's also something there. It could flicker back and forth between I don't have an answer and I do have an answer, but that answer will have to always be that same null null cage. Right. Yeah. You're you're allowed to forget that you used to know something, um, and you're allowed to re-remember it as long. But what you re-remember has to be the same as what you knew originally. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um. And that's a cage because you really want, like, there's going to be all kinds of different data that comes out of this. Uh, Scry kind of needs it to be a cage anyways, uh, but also, it, like, the, the other way you could do that, like, the, the general other approach to this is instead of using a cage, with, which is a sort of dynamic data type, uh, you could have a buck send of these are all the different kinds of things you can store in clay, just a, a union of them and be like, ah, it could be... A hoon file, which is stored as a chord, or a JSON, which is stored as this or whatever, and just uh, list them all, uh, which has the problem, of course, that if you want to store anything else that wasn't planned for, then it's 
you have to uh, recompile Clay with that new data type and hope that it can handle it everywhere. Um, so notably, you know, a user space library is thing that you can ask it to build for you, or it's built some, and it'll hand back. You can do that with Redeon, and so then you need it to hand you back a library. Like, what's the type of the library? Right. It's like, well, it can be different for every single library. So you can't put that as ahead of time. And so you have to have some sort of dynamic type wrapper for this. Right. Um, and so that's a vase, which is a pair of uh, hoon types, you know, as a noun, um, and the data itself. So then you have, you know, the library tagged with its uh, its type, um, and then the mark. So the case is a mark, a type, and the value. So a mark, the base, and um, yeah. So the mark is a just a, a string that says what it is. It's like a file extension. Alrighty, so that's what we produce. First thing we do is check uh, if it is coming from a ship other than us. So null means coming from us. We check permissions. Are they allowed to read this? Um, which is as simple as, uh, actually this is, I'm trying to decide if this is another try implementation. It might be. Um, but um, yeah, we Try. so let's see allowed by does read all oh, right. It's a it is a try implementation, but it not with the normal um, data type for it. I think because regs regs is different. Yeah, regs is map path to rule, but it's it. Oops. Yeah, so allowed by says, okay, can this ship read this path? Here's the relevant rules. And we say, well, is it in the list of rules? It, you know, is it a blacklist? Is it a whitelist? That gives you the answer of yes. Are, are they allowed to um, may read most of the time? Should this be that. Should Good. we change this to a try? Instead of, should we be changing regs to a try instead of a map path rule? Probably. Uh, it's not too hard to do. Uh, it's a little annoying that, you're, really that like you'll have to write an upgrade for them, but it's not that bad of an upgrade. Uh, it's just gas by an and then... Well, you mean uh, the migration function? From yeah, map to... right. Oh, but that, that doesn't go over the network or anything, so it's just gas by and then... Um, uh, sorry. Tap by and then gas D. Um, yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. With Notably, maybe, it, it has maybe a some little preference. bit. Maybe some precedence semantics too. You should be careful about that. Potentially. Yeah. Uh, it looks like it, it, it does handle a little bit specifically Y and Z, which have, I mean, it should do T as well, but, um, which have to do with its children. And so it'll check basically, not only do you, do you have permissions for this path, but do you have permissions for all the children that you're gonna, gonna be getting some information about? Um, okay, yeah. And that all ends up uh, turning into a Boolean, sorry, Lubian. Um, yeah. If you're not allowed to read it, we produce null, which means Again, we don't know that whether there's information here, or at least we refuse to tell you. Um, right, which is which is the right thing to do here because you can change the permissions in a non-referentially right. transparent manner, which yeah. means that we can't say hey, there's there will never be anything here because maybe if you ask me again, but I've let you see it, then you will actually see it. Right. So it's like exactly. it's like giving somebody a four or three instead of a four or four. Not right. allowed. Right. Yeah, so if they do have permissions to, to read this, then we're going to go through this uh, this big long switch statement. Basically, we virtualize read if it crashes. So if, if it succeeds, just produce the result. 
if it crashes we go ahead and print that out uh, and produce null null which is to say this exists but the answer is null which is a little bit surprising but we can do this because it's a deterministic error which means if yeah. you ran this again it would get the same deterministic error and so we're, that's why this is legit right uh it, it does mean you need to be a little bit careful when you're writing these that you're not crashing for uh referentially non-transparent reasons um right but i think we pretty much do that correctly well i think there might be some cases where we assert that there's a ford cache and where there isn't always um which is probably we assert yeah, something about the ford cache cash? well i i think we have situations where like we won't build something if the ford if it's not at the current revision because we don't have a Ford cache for it. And what we should do there is just build it with a bunted Ford cache. Um, yeah. But since we can don't, we also it produce... probably crashes. Although actually, also... it, it probably doesn't crash. It probably produces a unit. Yeah. Produces null. Yeah. Yeah, if we just produce SIG, then it should be fine. Yeah, which is what it should do. We'll see whether it does. Um, I'm trying to remember why this can even crash at all. It might just because it might just be because of the Ford builds, because those can crash. That might be it. Uh, yeah. That's virtually always when you see this. Like this read on fail does come up fairly often. From Ford. Um, yeah, and it is pretty much always when a Ford build crashed. Which, if that's mm -hmm. the case, then probably these should maybe we should move it into uh, yeah virtualize them yeah. Um, yeah, and probably. so then, yeah, read probably faster too, actually. Probably, yeah, prob yeah. probably, maybe. As long as it doesn't uh, call back at, back into itself, if it calls back into itself and makes a bunch of roads that don't share the like sig less caches or whatever, I, I don't know. It could end up being slower, but I, I don't think it makes a difference. Well, I'm just thinking that you know, doing an extra jump into and out of a road is generally to be avoided. But. Yeah. Oh right. Yeah, for for the ones that that don't need it. Um, yeah. Yeah, you, you do want to avoid it. Um, yeah. And so then here we have all the different cares and how they get responded to, which I think we can pretty much just go through quickly. Um, I mean, it doesn't have to be super quickly, but like none of them are very complicated. Um, but worth all looking right. at some examples of them. Read X is kind of your stereotypical one. Um, the, the the two patterns here are uh, either it produces a Ford cache or it doesn't. Um, in which case, we just put it on the end as unchanged just so that the internal functions can be a little simpler. But those are the only two patterns here. Um, so if we look at read X, takes an eon and a path. We know we're looking at X. Producing a unit unit cage, everything produces a unit unit cage. And we'll go through not that much. First, if it's at eon zero, the answer is we know the answer. It is nothing because if you remember eons, uh, like eon zero is the primordial suit. Eon one yeah. is the first one that has data. Yeah. yeah. Um, so if not that, then we check and see, do we have a revision at that Eon? Hopefully we do because that's like read out Eon is supposed to catch that or case to Eon is supposed to catch that, but we check it anyways, uh, because read X gets called directly from a few places as well. Um, because it's convenient. If we don't have that revision, then we don't know what's in that file. If so this idiom says do we have a foreign request manager for this desk which is another way of saying is this a foreign desk so if this is a foreign desk and we're asking for the most recent revision then we no sorry if this is not a foreign desk because it's null so if this is if this is a domestic desk and we're asking for the most recent revision then the onc cache applies and so uh, we use get 
cat D because that is the try engine. D in clay is, of course, the desk engine. Oh, well. Um, you should probably just rename the one, one of them. Yeah. Which probably should be the try engine because that's only used in a limited set of places. And, um, well, it's used in a lot more places now, but on this branch, which is unreleased. Yeah. Yeah. Could be, could be do. Do. That's not bad. It's kind of like that. I'll mark do it you, here so you compile error. At. Yeah. At, at sounds so like maybe. It has 12. Yeah, do does not exist. We'll call it do notation. Um, at feels like <laughs> it. Uh, it's used for something. Uh, text processing, basic printing. Okay. Rub at. Hmm. And then they'll start with R for some reason, apparently. We can just use the same, the same core. No, um, okay. So yeah, something like do could work. Do's not bad. Um, Right, so so we say, yeah, if there's something in the onc, then produce that. This is old code back when I was like, hey, bind is kind of cool. Turns out bind is not really cool, but mm -hmm. oh well. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. That's also why it's got tis losses, because it predates tis faz, except for this, which I changed recently because the blob store looks different, and so I use a tis faz. Oh well. Um. Yeah. Right. So if the on cache is in play, then we use that. Otherwise, we take the uh the taco says commit hash, convert that to a commit by looking it up in the object store, and then we check and see if we have a uh if we have anything in its data. So this is q dot yaki the map of path to lobe. Which I can see if we have a lobe at that path, at the requested path. If that's null, then we say, we know about this commit and it has nothing at that path, so null, null. Otherwise, there is data at this path. Where are we uh, getting talk from? Because we're calling taco to yaki on talk. Where does talk right. come from? So we looked okay, up so the, the, the eon in, yeah. Yes, yeah, so we look up by eon and that gives us a talk Go, which is uh, the hash of a commit. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. So then the, there's a map of Taco Yaki. Yeah. Okay. That we look it up in. And then we look up in there. I mean, map of path to lobe. Yeah. And then we look up the lobe back in the ring to get a page, a unit page. Yep. If it's null, that means that there was either a bug or um, uh, we've tombstoned this file. And so. Either case, they refuse to answer. <laughs> exactly. Refuse to answer. Which does not mean it's an empty file. It means we refuse to answer. We plead the fifth. Um, yeah. Otherwise, we have now a page and we're very close to being able to answer. Um, so we say, okay, if it's a hoon, so that's the mark in the page. If you remember, page is uh, cask, so it's a, it's a pair of mark and uh, noun. So if the mark is hoon, then we, uh, that means that it's going to be a, that the, the data is going to be a chord, and so we coerce it to a pat t. Uh, we give it the type of a chord. Uh, of course, the mark is hoon, so because this is you know, this is unit unit cage, right? So null null mark type data. So we pr just produce it if it's a hoon. You you have to special purpose it or special case it for bootstrapping reasons, because you need to use this, for example, to be able to get a file that you can use to compile a mark so that you can store some file that has a different mark. Than why, are we, 
Why are we even micmicking it there? Because it's a noun. Yeah, but like... Oh, it, it, it doesn't noun? need to be, but uh, it would be... If something went wrong, I would rather have it crash here. Like, if we eventually changed Hoon to say, oh, actually, Hoon is a, a, some kind of ordered map or something of lines, you want it to crash here and not give someone a type, like a mistyped vase. Especially I guess. The kernel. I mean, it's also one, it's one knock instruction. That's not true necessarily, right? Can't the Mic Mic, um call sane? No, I don't think I'm not sure. I'm pretty sure Mic Mic can doesn't it? call sane. Yeah. It, but sane's not a biblical. Is there a biblical route to sane? I don't know. I'm curious. Uh, it's this, right? This is open. This is large. Yeah. So, factory, senhep. Uh, okay, that's going to be a little hard to actually read. Uh, I don't think yeah. it can because it would need to be a biblical for that. But which is it? I mean, yeah, it would. It would need to be a biblical, but. Uh, maybe this is something Joe was talking about wiring up, but it hasn't been wired up yet. And also check. Yeah, that's possible. Um, I, yeah, I, I, I'm assuming that Pat T is actually quite fast, like the make to Pat T. If it's not, then I could see an argument for for changing that but i do like the safety of it yeah it's also really easy to accidentally be like oh yeah this should have been a q dot q dot u dot pig uh but i didn't do that you know um which oh well okay so if it's a hoon we just produce it directly otherwise we're gonna want to read it out of Ford. So yeah, I just we, checked it. It doesn't. It doesn't get sand right now. Mignick does not impact sand. I just tried on the dojo. Okay. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Here, this is this is obviously all just refactored recently for uh, uh, for the adjustment to the blob store because I was like, oh, I, peg is is the normal name for unit page, but there's one up here and there's one down here and they're different. So I need a different name. So I use pig, but of course this is the definition of peg. And this is the definition of pig. They're the same. Um, so yeah, I was it's, wondering about this actually. Why? Right. So it's, why are we doing this again? We used to need to, because there was a, a step oh, here one that, that was like, if it was a direct, <laughs> we need to like yeah. reduce it down. But actually, no. Yeah. They just nope. Which also, we might not need the special case for Hoon. I'm not sure. Uh, if Ford special cases it, then we don't need it. Ford might special case it. Uh, you could put the special case in a couple different places. Yeah, actually, Ford yeah. might. Uh, Probably or... needs to. Yeah. So for the viewers at home. Yeah, it uh, does. It, for the viewers it at home, there are a couple a... special marks that yeah. that clay need, uses because it, it actually needs to um bootstrap so it at least needs to be able to read hoon files so it actually hard codes some parts of the hoon mark um yeah so that it can yeah, there we go yeah although i kind of like i don't know is it the same oh yeah yeah, the Adam Adam doing the direct send Adam is better there, just to make sure that the the zap guard make sure that the zap guard doesn't um, do something. No, I mean, weird. it looks I mean, like it worked fine there, but it looks like it, it works fine. But zap guard is a biblical, better. so it working fine here doesn't mean it works fine there. <sighs> right. <laughs> yeah, like whenever we can use explicit type datums, we should. I was probably yeah. just being lazy when I wrote that. Cool. But 
it's not any harder to write the <laughs> I see. Yeah, uh, I think that, that was which that one doesn't yeah, make me. Oh well, the line seven ninety four. That I think that's Liam's fix, right? To do yeah, his guard dot dot zero. Yeah, which which notably you could also write this as well. Mime is a little more complicated than just San Adam, but y you could write the literal type for mime and then do the other, but. Yeah. The, the nice thing about this is it will definitely actually this will even fail to compile if um, if, mine if your is type not changes just... or well if your type falls out of sync with what it is I don't know it doesn't make a big difference it'll um, compile but, I think it's wrong. wrong well it like uh yeah yeah you're right yeah no it it actually doesn't affect how it compiles um. Yeah, so you're right that we can remove this. So I'll do that right now. Um, nice. So it actually is. Is Okay, if we have the file, ask Ford to turn it into a cage and then produce that cage. Um, and Ford apparently doesn't produce a unit at all. And so um, if it doesn't work for whatever reason, it crashes. This is the kind of place where you could put the uh the mule if you wanted to the virtualization um yeah there's a bunch more stuff in forward of course that you know we're that will elide for now um and take up forward in a future session <laughs> but that's sort of an obvious function of like well i have a, a mark and data and now i want it to be a mark and type and data that's right in forward's wheel and you and we want to validate it too yeah. Although we don't really need to validate it here because we should have validated it before you know, letting Probably. it come into clay. Yeah. But we do validate it because we're just not trying that hard. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hopefully climbing wow. is fast. Um, yeah. Unless it's a hoon one, then we don't validate it. But anyways. Uh, I mean, we probably should be not validating it there. Um, and I think this goes back to what we yeah. talked about in the last episode of like, um, it would actually be nice to just have the the type the like the type for each mark be cached. Um, yeah. Then that way we could just assemble it here, right? So the yeah. the way to get the page would be that you take the page and you just stick the type that you have cached separately into the middle between the mark and the noun. Yeah. And you're just done. Yeah, it'd be straightforward. Right. So. That's how Redux works. And it's probably on the more complicated side of any of these. Um, it does all the different checks that it could do. Notably, the cage that it produces uh, has the mark and the type of the data that you requested. It's not hard-coded. Many of these others are, are going to return a specific type uh, just based on, like, if you know that it's a send Y, then you know that it's going to produce a send arch and something that casts arch. Um, that's not true of send x. So then uh, we can go through these other ones in maybe a somewhat haphazard order, or else we could go in a hazardous order. Um, fully hazard. Um, Read R is a natural follow-up to read X because it's exactly the same as read X, except we produce it as a vase. So mark is not a same mark. Yeah, same yeah, mark. same mark, but it it's actually not of that mark. Exciting. What do we need this for? Uh, you need it when, as I'm curious where we actually use it, uh, I added it at some point because if you ever want to scry something out and you're a fairly generic piece of software, then, uh, then you need it. Oops. Looks like it's used in kiln. Let's see. Um... 
Yeah, I guess it's Kiln for doing merges. Oh yeah, yeah. So Kiln has has this logic for uh, if there's a merge conflict, then we'll try and create a scratch desk and put the annotated files there. And so yeah. to do that, it needs to get the base like the the three relevant um versions of the file diff them against each other uh combine those uh and annotate them which is what mash does and then uh mm. write out you that. know i think we could probably yeah i bet we could do this in a different way that doesn't require cr actually because basically um you could move I feel some like you should be play. able to just Potentially, but I was thinking that, so because we know that all these things are actually validated already, right? Mm -hmm. We don't have to validate them here. And so what you could do is just, you know, treat them as raw nouns and then basically run the, um, the diff stuff. Uh, probably did, uh, um, you could run that up. Right, so you'd slime it, basically. Right, so oh yeah, uh, yeah. You yeah, you, you type can... and end up with uh, probably something like a page, right? That you stick back into the clip. Yeah, you could do that. It's a bit like it, it feels like you're, you're switching into unsafe mode, and which could be fine. Yeah, something like kill. Yeah. But it's interesting that it isn't necessary. Um, because this is safe as long as clay is producing uh, correct vases, then like right. as long as clay is, is behaving, then kiln uh, is never going to produce an evil vase through this mechanism. Right. Um, yeah. It's, it, it's, yeah, and it's, it's interesting yeah. that you do end up sort of needing to do this sort of typed operation outside of clay in your space to do a merge. It's yeah. sort of at one at one level, it's like, well, yeah, of course you do because we do, you know, type type directed intro, and so you know you need the type or to. Well, not. the reason why why you need to do this part in user space um, is because you're like creating desks and stuff, and and you really want the concept of a merge in Clay to not have a policy around like. What's the name of the scratch desk? Um, yeah, you, you want a merging clay to be. Here's two commits. Give me a new commit. And this is like, well, here's the two the two original commits, but I I want to create a new desk or update an existing desk or something with uh with some like that's not the, this current one with some annotated conflicts and like really it, it should well in some. Like if you decided you want to do it without making a new desk, you'd have to be like, let me pause updates to software distribution or something like that. Like it's it's just kind of a different mindset when you're when you're trying to set up a an environment for uh, resolving conflicts because what you're producing is not a desk with a capital D that is currently runnable. Right. Yeah. You. I feel like ideally you'd actually store it as something that isn't exactly a desk, right? It's like a, um, maybe it's a little desk. desk yeah, it, it, I mean, it, it, it could even be yeah. like kiln state. That's like, oh yeah, we have this kind yeah. of pending, pending merge. You can cancel that pending merge, or you know, or view it in this way, or mount it in this way to Unix or whatever. Um, right, and have some sort of policy about like, well, if if we're expecting something to merge cleanly and it doesn't, then do we pause updates? Or do we just try for the next one? Right. Or what? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, but, there is a, yeah. there's a practical problem with creating a new desk, right? Which is that you can't delete desks at the moment. And so, yeah, it is well, sort of there. This can only double the number of desks as long as you don't <laughs> True. Uh, but like, merge into it's just kind of, scratch desks. But yeah. Yeah, it just kind of clears up the space a little bit, right? It's not like... Yeah. Yeah, I mean, maybe maybe read D was a mistake. We can look at that one next if we want. All right, let's do it.
So read R, send X, wrapped in a vase. Straightforward to implement. A little bit confusing to think about when you'd need it, but when you do need it, it's kind of obvious. Um, read D probably should be in read buck, almost certainly, because it... Um, so we check, first of all, that check should be in like allow by or whatever, like that that other helper function shouldn't be here, but oh well. Um, so we say read D can never take a path. It, we just want to produce the current set of desks, um, which is not reflexly oh. transparent. Yeah, that should definitely be. Doesn't depend on the Eon. Yeah. yeah. It's uh. Uh, but it, it's also the, the thing that makes it uh, so that people are like, oh, my namespace is cluttered. Well, only if you know what the names are. Um, but yeah, I'm going to mark this as... Oh, well, no, we, we do need that, though. We need, to, we need to be able to ask Clay, like, hey, what desks do you have? Yeah, we probably should. But it does feel a little like, eh. You mean I can't make a desk just because it has to go with all the other desks? Maybe I can make a hidden desk. What do they call it? Like an alternative data stream desk. Just prefix it with dot scratch. Um, yeah. So that's what yeah, D like... does. Go ahead. Okay. I was going to yeah. say yeah, it'll be like the uh, you know, dot DS store. Right. On Mac. Right. But actually, yeah. I think it's more like core files, <laughs> right? Like core dumps, just like getting dumped everywhere. Yeah, yeah, it, it is a bit like that. All right, do, do you remember alternate data streams on Windows? Oh no, I didn't know that was a thing. They're what are those? They're a way to it's kind of confusing, but basically, you can have a file. And then an alternate data stream for that same file, which is just has the same, which is just has different data. It's just like another another set of content for the same file. Um, it turned out to be like <laughs> nobody basically ever does this because, uh, but like it, it's notable because you, you uh, like you can't tell just by looking at the file. I don't even know if there's a way to query. Uh, does this have any alternate data streams? Instead, like you just have to know the name of that alternate data stream as it is, as it's associated with that file, um, and then you can get to it. Why do why why are engineers like this? Uh, I don't know, man. I I just read Showstopper, um, which is the story. Oh yeah, of uh, I started reading it. The uh, yeah, the creation of Windows, Windows NT, NT, and they did not yeah. cover this. So they talk a lot about the file mm -hmm. system, but okay. I'll have to write right. a letter to the author. Um, but anyways, yeah. So read D produces the list of desks, set of desks. Uh, yeah, I mean, just definitely uh, falls local desks only. Sort of, yeah, it's like something you're asking Clay, not asking a desk. Yeah, exactly. Certainly yeah. not any particular desk. Hey, some of these could right. be good contributor tasks, actually, right? To like do these little... These little moves yeah, and whatnot. It needs to happen on on the on my branch or after it merges, but yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um it's also annoying because read D is like A, B, C and E and F are all right. like totally con like tightly connected and D is just, oh well. Um uh, Yep. But anyways, well, we so could delete D and yeah. then A, B, C, E, and F are tightly connected, which is nice. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we'll come up with something else before to do. Uh, maybe something about versions. We'll put it in D. Yeah. Uh, but uh, ironically. Yeah, yeah. Probably will. All right. Then. All right. So we've covered X uh, and S and D. Sorry. X, R, and D. Um, y is a natural one to go to next. So read Y. There's also a little bit of like, when I look at this, I'm like, this thing is huge. Back in my day, it was this. 
there was three cares and that was all we needed. Wow. Um, but, uh, right, so read why is going to produce, it's a unit unit cage. We're actually a little more specific with the type here by saying it's a unit unit. Specifically, the mark is going to be an arch. Hypo of arch. So hypo is a vase, except vase would be... It preserves, it preserves type information about its tail. Right. So As instead of vase, type can... noun, it's type, and then, like in this case, arch, which obviously is a kind of vase, but uh, it's more specific, and it'll you'll you know it'll you'll get a compile time error if it's not actually a, an arch. Isn't there some reason we need this? There's some reason we actually need this to be a hypo, right? I don't remember what it is. No, but... we, we don't need this to be a hypo. There, uh, you do need it really? in uh, when you're in like call or well, that's a hypo. Take it takes a hypo now, or no, it doesn't, because it doesn't need to. It used to be that it used to be a, th this was a hypo hobo task. It was a hypo uh, hobo, and it doesn't need to be anymore. It's still a hobo because we have to. Yeah, it's because yeah. Um, there was some idea that like veins might get uh, signs where that might not match where the type might not match the value which is crazy it's um, yeah and i don't know like yeah i think that was like a different older arvo design that like didn't guarantee that the sign would have the right type uh and of course arvo can't guarantee that all the tasks have the right type um because uh it might well, be getting also... from you and so that's yeah. when you get soft or right. not that, soft, that, that's the hobo but, part yeah yeah and so then this just the harden gate just uh mic mix it if it if it's prefaced with the send soft um right. and otherwise right. just you know grabs it yeah i i think the reason why hypo was convenient at the time was um like Uh, we didn't have all the data structures for each, like all the tasks listed in, in lull or juice. Uh, they were listed at the top of each file. And so it was very common to send a move to, even from within a vein, to send to accidentally send a move to another vein that had a different type than what it expected. Um, and I think type, uh, I, I think hypo it, let us catch many of those cases, but it might not have, I don't know. Anyways, that makes sense. It, it yeah. was chaos back then. Um, yeah. Here, though, that, that gets cast to a unit, unit cage above, so it's just for uh, convenience. Like it, it, It'll make, help the compiler uh, catch errors and for documentation, basically. So, yeah. if there's no eon, or like if it's the eon of zero, that means there's no data. No data here does not mean null. It means there is, you know, an arch here. There is a send y. It's just that it has the type of arch, and it and the data is um, is the null arch. Let's probably look at arch real quick. Uh, arch is an axle, which is a try of pat uvi, which is hashes. So that's this one. Or sorry, it's it's not a full try. X Ax, XL is a full try. Axil is like a try except not recursive. So it's gonna be I so it has two items. First one is unit file, so possibly the hash of a file inside it. And then it's gonna have a, a map of its children to null. Uh, as opposed to this one, which has a map of the children to recurse, which is like what's in the onc, for example. But since UI doesn't recurse, it just gives you the file and the list of children at that path, which in the case of zero is null. This obviously could just be uh, that. Honestly, I think it should be that. Yeah. You can see it either way. But uh, no, actually, that clear. doesn't nest. Oh, you're right. It doesn't nest. Yeah, that's why it's that way. Um, 
Yeah, I just want everybody listening to know that axial and axial, while they may not look like real words, are actually real words. Yes, they are. I forget what axial means. I just looked it up. Uh, it's a botany word, the upper angle between the leaf, stalk, or branch, and the stem or trunk from which it's grown. Axial is a uh, 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 variant of axial. Like, uh, is, it's a variant of what? Axial. Oh, oh, as of, of axial. Right. Axial. Yeah. right, right. If they're good enough for the English language, good enough for me. All right. Yep. So that's what we're producing. If it's null, then there's no file there. It has no children. Uh, notably, that's true regardless of what path you request for. Because the mindset here, we'll see it more clearly in a second, is that uh, read why this arch, this directory listing, exists at any path that you might request. Um, not just any existing path. What does it mean for a path to be existing? It doesn't mean anything. Every path exists. Um, it just might have no data in it. So it might have an empty file and it might have no children, but it exists. Um, we we will give you null in some cases. So, so basically th this should never give you null null because it always exists. It might give you null, for example, if you ask for a uh, an, an eon that doesn't exist, um, but if it does exist, we'll turn it into a yaki, which is a commit. We will take a look at the length of the path for some reason. Um, I guess we'll get to that. If we've gotten this far, we know it's going to exist, and so we say, okay, null, null, arch, and it's of that type. So now we just need to produce the arch. So we say, look up that path. It, uh, if it, ex you know, and that's going to produce a unit lobe, which is exactly what goes in the file item, or the file uh, portion of the result. For the directory listing, we say we're, we're you know we're going to produce this type, and that's not not is pat ta, um, which is you know the name of the subdirectory, and we do this because. Uh, Yaki's don't have a try in them. They have a map of path to lobe. We say skim by that list, except uh, delete the one we're actually looking for right now to get all the ones where uh, where it's a prefix. So if the path we're looking for is the length of path we're looking for, that sized prefix of the path of the item we're looking at then this is a descendant and then we check and see if it has uh, more items in the path beyond just the one more then we then it's a it's not a child but like a grandchild or something and so we eliminate those I think. Where are we doing that? No, we're Actually, not. Actually, we, we don't eliminate them. That's what we do is, is is we say, we're take just, the, oh, right. We're, we're, sorry. We, we're we don't just eliminate grabbing them. the first element of the path so that, yes. um, so that it shows up as like, so you only see the first element of the path in the listing. Right. And so you, you might okay. end up then here with, with a list that has, uh, that has several items, like several identical items, but we're going to make a map out of it. So those will combine. Um, but yeah, we 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 don't want to like skim those off because uh, there might not be a child that has its own file or something. Uh, it might not be only grandchildren, and so we just want to get the first like the next step, which is what that's doing. It's saying take off the first len items and yeah. produce right. and look at the, the first path element after that. Yeah. Yeah. Right. It strikes me that this would be easier if we were storing our data as a try. Yeah, yeah, it would be it would be cleaner certainly, and probably have better asymptotics. Yeah, it hasn't made a difference so far, 
Um, but it does feel like the kind of thing that should be done. Yeah. Yep. So that is Sen Y. Uh, a natural pair with Sen Y is Sen T, which is so it produces a file list, which is just a list of paths. Um, and this is similar except clearly written in a different era and I think by a different person maybe um and so the style is all different but this is the same line uh, I wrote this. oh yeah nice um and so what it's doing is saying um you know, if this revision doesn't exist, it doesn't. We don't have an answer. Otherwise, look at the commit, find the length of it, uh, sort them alphabetically, which is something the other one doesn't do because it produces a map, uh, but this one produces a list, and or sort our result alphabetically after we skim off everything that matches. So this is all of our descendants recursively, uh, instead of just one layer of them, and it's produces a list of paths. Yeah, I built for um, for the unit tests. Oh yeah, yeah, it is convenient for that certainly. Um, although this would also be, I think, about the same if we did it as um, a try, if we were starting data to try. Right. But so there, be... yeah, there there was a time when SendZ did not produce a hash when it produced an unk. And when it did really? that, then this would be tap D or tap do, if we're going to call it that, of that. Um, and that would simplify the whole thing a little bit. Tap, you said? Yeah. So uh, with a try, well, I, I guess. You, you, w w so, oh, yeah. So with you a, just so with a try, there's a, there's a descend, I think it's called dip function that would say go down to this path and then just convert it to a list um yeah and that would be efficient that would be and clean um yeah yeah but that's not what read z does right now All right now it produces just a hash send uvi hypo uvi um if we're at version or eon zero, we produce tarpat uvi. I'm not sure that's actually quite correct. Uh, it should be a hash of whatever's in send uh, read y, which might be might be that. We'll have to see. We'll see in a second. Um, otherwise, this whole thing. So find the revision and then do run content hash. So content hash. Says, Another yeah, place we should be, you know, then Adam, send UVI, sig, right, instead of Pep calls Apgar of Tarpat UVI. Yeah, that seems good. That? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Looks correct. Um, and then. Right, and so then content hash takes Yaki. You don't need the path. Good. So what? You don't need the stand in front of the quote UVI. Do you not? Or I, I guess Pat Pat TA is gonna or Pat T is gonna go to Pat TAS correctly. I I like the send there because it uh, it communicates that this isn't a like this is a Pat TAS basically. Yeah, is it though? Well, it, I don't think it's a sane one, but it uh, right. actually maybe it's not. Let's see. This is the kind of place where actually I would expect it to. Uh, let's see. Uh, it is a term. Yeah. Term. But yeah. it's not. It's not a sane term. 
Just a, an insane term, huh? Mm-hmm. That's what the capital I stands for. Yeah. Uh, right. So we're hashing this commit at this path. We virtually always, well, no, no virtually always, okay. We, we, we very often do this at root to say, what's, uh, you know, a, a hash of all the contents of this director, uh, of this desk so that we can see, does this desk match your desk? Do I have the latest update? That kind of thing. Uh, but you can do it at a subpath as well. The, uh, and it should, I think it has the sort of Merkle type properties you'd expect there. Uh, so we start by getting its descendants in the same way that happens in read y, and that should probably be factored out, and but it should really be a try, and so on. Now we have its descendants. Well, similar way to y, same technique. Um, and so then, but that comes out to us as a list of paired of path at uh, list pair path lobe. Then we go through and oh, that's so exciting uh we so we we check and see do we have a file here as well like exactly at that path so now we have the descendants and the file at that path if we have neither of those then it is tarpat uvi which answers the question of was that was this handling correct yes it, it zero it is. is the hash yeah. for for that for um which is which is good because it it lets you and yeah, i think that recognize that quickly. typically don't output zero right they I, well like a, sometimes they won't output zero sometimes they will but uh only very rarely just like any other number um but some of them yeah don't output zero i don't know about this one which is yeah uh, especially since we probably like XOR two things together, in which case maybe it does output zero. But, um, right, so then we roll over the list of descendants, including ourselves, if we have anything, otherwise we're just tarlobe. Um, that null being the empty path. The, uh, that path, also notably, we slag it off. So if you have two directories whose contents are the same but whose names are different because they're sibling directories um, and you send CZ them you'll get the same result because it does it, it does not use the fully qualified path it only uses the subpath portion which I think is correct um, what I think is not great is that it does this um, based on a turn that came out of tap by so the order of this hash is mug uh, yeah. is influenced by the mug it really should be sorted yep but I agree. it currently isn't um there are various ways to do that migration like that it's easy to fix the code of course the migration is a little bit exciting but you could probably do it based on a uh like an like a like an Universal epoch time. Time. yeah yeah um i think that would work fine it would still mean you might you might get some false negatives. Uh, it, you know, it's like, oh, these two things change. It's like, well, no, actually, they're just on opposite sides of the epoch. But you could for, always just uh, yeah. make a new. CD. Yeah, I mean, read D. Uh, yeah, exactly. Lots of options. Um, but yeah, it's it's not great that it's unstable in that way. Not that it. I mean, I don't know if there are any observable effects from that exactly, but... Well, uh, if mug changed, that could be a problem, but... Yeah, yeah, but it's, it's not great. Um, but it is... Let's see. What other properties does this have? Well, so Shaq's jam... Of... Also so it has everything that's in lobe, um, which if you remember is the mark and the data, but not the type. We jam that with its path name, right? So if you have the same files, but with different file names, you know, within the subpath section, those are gonna be different. Uh, 
Um, I don't think there's any way there's to. A thing... hmm? There's a strange thing here where like it's rippling across, right? This roll. Whereas yes. I would have expected it to be more sort of like symmetric, you know, doing a three, like a binary tree style kind of join instead of a, like a linear. Yeah, line. no, you're right. This doesn't have, a, even not a binary tree, but like um, just a tree at all. Uh, yeah. it, so if you know the hashes of your descendants, and you know the hash of the file that you're at, you don't actually know the um, the hash of the whole thing put together. Which right. Is so actually, not I think good. Means you can't you can't do a Merkle proof, right? right? Yeah, which which sucks. You really should be able to yeah. do a Merkle proof actually in yeah. play. Yeah, no, I don't. You, you I don't know if you should, should be able to. The mom should be like, we will. I'm, I'm sure at some point somebody will want to. Right. Um, it's another thing that would be maybe like that, that would be simpler if you're, I don't know if there's any actual try operations, the whole thing. but it, but, but if you're in a try yes. mindset, then you're like, of course. Um, but I think <laughs> yeah. I might've written this hash. And if I did, it was before I knew what tries were or Merkle trees or much of anything. So it was a long time ago. Yeah. I'm not sure I knew what James was at the time either. And this may even be so. the first time that anybody yeah. has looked at this code uh, since then. Oh, I guess there's a TizFaz, so. so uh, was... Yeah, so something, although it wasn't looked at very closely because surely there's a way to like abstract that. But yeah, definitely very old code. That pretty much yeah. works for the things we needed to do. The, the hash there is Shex, which uh is the same as the hash for a lobe which is natural i mean it, uh, it does you know it, it satisfies the basic contract to like generate a hash of the data <laughs> right if if the data is different this is going to be different if data is the same it'll pretty much be the same yeah yeah so that's just shot 256. right so that's content hash that's what comes out of read Z. There's something else that's sort of interesting here, which is that the um, uh, you could imagine actually caching the hashes in the try. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, you certainly could. I, I feel like we might want to because it's the kind of thing that you might run a bunch of times. Yeah, well, it, it doesn't make any sense with this hash, but if you Merkleize it, then right, then yes. Yeah. Um, right. And you right. could actually promote it as, as right. You could keep the you could keep the old values too if they didn't change. Right. Yeah. This was and potentially all you could do there. For, for it just has a structure. You know, it has this a stuff me flame graph. Like, well, makes me wonder if forward should also be rewritten to use tries. Something we should look at when we do the forward section. We should, we should just audit the entire code base and be like, where can we use tries? I'm sure graph store could be a yeah. try. I mean, maybe it, it is. Should be. It, it, it is. I mean, it, it isn't the data structure, but it is a try. Right. It's a graph. It's an ordered map of ordered map of ordered map of some, some try. Yeah. <laughs> right. Are ordered maps tries? No, but. Um, it's like an ordered try, and, um, right? Where basically, like, you have a list of dates, or it's just, it's defined as add. They, they use dates, uh, but it's a yes. Yeah, so it's a list of dates as the as the key, right? And then that to either like a single mode or uh, another track. Or, yes. Right. So, I guess what's confusing, like basically, it, um, it kind of feels like there should be a nesting relationship there, but there should be a what? 
uh, a nesting relationship there, but there isn't. Uh, between because, one and one. Because ordered map is is implemented as uh, a binary tree, and and tries are implemented as entry trees. Uh, yeah. Okay. So that's why there's not a trivial nesting relationship, but there is a sense in which uh, a try is a type of ordered map. Like well, it has similar asymptotics sense. for. So you're saying a try is a kind of ordered map? Well, it it has some similar asymptotics on some stuff, right? If you. Uh, but I guess the 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 interface is different in that um, an ordered map. Well, okay. It's 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 more that a a try really probably like the most powerful version of a try is that. And if you do that, then graph store it could yeah. use this basically. I mean, it had to be that, but sure. Right, you would need the and you need some kind of ordering function that actually works. Um yeah. for different auras. For multiple auras i've written this before but yeah, yeah um and i mean there's a, a line of thinking that goes that clay should also you know have some concept of ordering for its files um yeah more or less because can <laughs> right let's say right. you know might as well Which, um yeah i mean we have uh there it is there's the ordering sort of right yeah, although you know, path elements don't have to be uh, alphabetical. I mean, I guess they sort of they do have to be made of. I mean, path T can be right characters. Now they're, right? they're they're path T A, which yeah, is pretty enforced. restrictive. Yeah, yeah. Although perhaps assumed, uh, um, but yeah. 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 Um, well, yeah. And so this is the other thing here is that if you used um, a list of done for a pass, mm -hmm. then you just define a different ordering for each aura and an ordering among auras. And yeah, that's pretty easy. Yeah, that's true. Um, right. Okay. Then. Let's go and hit some of these last cares. Uh, okay, so we covered X, Y, and Z. Let's look at W. Read W is uh, this one's confusing because we do actually give it the original case instead of the eon and then we do case that eon again which is weird we should, could have just passed that in but it's fine um but it has the unusual semantics that it does depend on what kind of case you gave or actually it probably doesn't yeah no it doesn't this, that, that's all just for confusion's purpose <laughs> like that that should just take yawn it you know the, these interfaces have obviously changed over time Mm, yeah. Oops. Yeah, and it's yawn instead of u dot a. Yep. It's so old that yawn wasn't even the name for a yawn at the time. It's uh, a little weird that we give pat ta of zero there, don't we? In other cases, don't we give um, you know two thousand one one? Yeah, this is from when the bunt of pat ta was zero. Um, uh, suggest that actually we should just use you know, tar pat da in other places. Oh well, actually maybe not because you kind of want to give the same answer even if we do change the bond. Yeah, yeah, that one potentially should change. It's hard to, yeah, hard to say on that one. But what the the semantics for this are that we produce something that has cast, which I don't think is a word, and for some reason I couldn't think of cash, but I've since reused cache so oh well or not reused but used cache uh but still um so what we're producing uh, is the the eon number there's a word the date that it's from cases yeah yeah it, uh 
It means, it's obsolete, but it, it means to render useless or void, to annul, to reject, to send away. Nice. I learned something today. Yeah. Cass. Gonna have to use that. Um, right, so it, it, it produces the version number and the date of that version. The The primary usage of, of sendw is... Um, uh, you want to say what's the version number at like now you you do it with da plus now and that gives you um then that gives you the version number if you end up needing that. yeah all right so we've covered these working backward read v uh if you do this like th this is the one that gets handled super specially to turn something into a foreign subscription and syncing from foreign stuff, but doesn't apply if you've gotten this far. So what actually happens here is we say, if you're asking for something in the past, so, okay, so if you're asking for the current one, then we just produce a dome clay. Dome clay is this as opposed to this. Uh, as opposed to this. So it's the same thing, just with fewer caches. It, this is the public. Uh, yeah, it's a public it. dome, not a kernel special dome. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, er, read V. Um, and so we, yeah, I produce don't that. Like that those same. Do they have the same name? Yeah, it is kind of weird. Should be thought through at some point probably get rid of the onk at some point but any, but anyways if you ask for something in the future uh we can't give you an answer if you ask for something in the past we can give you an answer but we're going to do a couple things firstly we're going to give you an onk that will confuse you instead of giving a null onk that's exciting um but yeah so it's an onk who's item is it, like who has a enough. file say what Oh, I see. So it's almost a null onk, but not quite. Yeah, it's it's just like a sentinel onk. It's a um, sentinel, yeah. Which, oh well. Uh, hopefully, I mean, you know, hopefully you weren't using it. And I guess that it will give you something to, to search for if you do run into it. Uh, yeah. Let, so the top revision that we, that we say that dome has is the one that's given, not the actual top revision. Uh, because we're giving a snapshot of the dome as it was at that time up to cache. Um, and that means we go through and filter out any uh, revision numbers or labels which refer to revisions after the one that's requested. Right. Which seems fine. Yeah, that makes sense. These probably shouldn't be included at all, but oh well. What are those um, town? Uh, they're tombstoning stuff, so it's, it's a reasonable time to try and fix okay. them. But probably they shouldn't be in that dome. I don't know. It's hard to say. They're not caches, so you kind of want to know them, but it doesn't make sense for them in the past. So maybe the past ones should just have well, a... Uh, it a, doesn't uh, make sense for them across the ship. Right, like... Yeah, which they, they, they do get stripped before they send before getting sent over the network. Um, oh, they do. Like the onk. Yeah, just like the Ankh gets straight. I mean, it's just like, if you, but... I guess if you, like, uh, if you create a new desk by forking it off with an older one, then you probably do want to keep those zone policies. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you might or might not, but it's at but least I, nice to be able to. I think read V is not necessary for that. I don't know. It, it depends on if you want what's in here to be all the data about the desk. That's one thing. If it's if you want it to be meaningful in the past, then that's maybe another thing. This probably should be like, yeah, like if it's in the past, then we don't know. I, I don't know, but not terribly. Oh, cool. that's right. This isn't referentially transparent, right? Because yeah. the Tom and Nor change over time. Yeah, which since this was referentially That's... transparent and now it isn't, 
Well, sort of. The labels are not officially transparent either. I, I mean, thought they are. Uh, they are, but they make Dome not referentially transparent because you might label something that happened in the past and then now the Dome for the past changed. Maybe Dome, maybe labels shouldn't be in Dome. I don't know. Uh, but these, we, we could just might track just when they were at. We could just track when they were yeah. at. And then, yeah, that works too. Their, I, I, that would be my preference because I think like the idea that you bind a label and like, like you can't undo that it makes sense to me uh, right and then as long as you can't undo it then that's a referentially transparent thing uh right but yeah um um it, i mean there's also an argument that asking for a dome is like really not a, a it's not a sort of, not true a well kind of request question. yeah it, it's yeah. like Give me all the data that you had about this at that time. It's like, no, get, ask a question that I can give you invariance on, or else ask it to me at right. the current date. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, what's the for read v right? Like, maybe it really should just be you get the uh, you know let hit and lab, or just maybe let and hit. Even just, yeah, let, let and hit would be a reasonable thing to request. The, the main reason that people actually, let's see. Yeah, so the the clients of V are uh, two. There is one is um, requesting a V over the network gets interpreted, or uh, of of a foreign ship gets interpreted as a sync all the data down request, um, which that we can handle totally separately and is not like it, the, it, in that case, you're generally throwing away the response. And so it doesn't matter what's in the response. It's just like almost a command to clay. Um, the second usage of, of sense EV is in merges. Uh, you tend to like you, you make that request at the very beginning of them to say, Hey, get me that foreign desk, partially so that it gets synced down, but also I, I do actually want to know what like are the revisions that it has, so that I can look those up, so that I can uh, know what the commits are that I'm merging. Um, which for that, all you need is let and hit, mostly you hit. So, um, yeah, maybe it should just be. This comment applies to both lines, so I can do this, sort of. Okay. Um, right. So that's read v. Gives you a dome. Read u. Yeah, it's a bit of a weird one. Yeah. There's that that that's kind of the 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 takeaway with a lot of these is there's some of these that are clean like read X and there's a lot of them that are a little bit weird and should probably be evaluated as part of a general cleanup but also could be just kind of casually improved anytime you touch anything near it um, but like yeah yeah it, for some of them it's tough because it would break referential transparency on old stuff which you know it might be okay right. for us to push out over the network for now but won't be okay forever right. yeah yeah uh which also read... suggests we should do all that stuff as soon as possible <laughs> right yeah but also i like you would have said that five years ago and it would have been true five years ago but you know It'll happen when yeah, it it's just um, <laughs> things sort of faster un... now than they did five years ago. So, yeah, yeah, it, it, we just don't we don't really know when there will be so many. At what point there will be you know so many applications depending on this that you know right. we can't afford to right. change an old answer. Like it's clearly yeah, that's clearly not the case. The trouble of queuing it up for a but, Kelvin upgrade and so on. I mean, yeah, yeah. Right, and like so, that's clearly not the case now. We mm -hmm. strongly hope that it will be the case sometime in the future, and 
it's closer than it was five years ago. <laughs> yeah. And hard to say by how much, but yeah. Yep. Yep. Read you looks like a similar uh, style to read T. Um, and it checks whether something exists or whether a file or yeah, wh wh whether a the path has a file contents. So whether a file exists, basically. This looks exactly like everything we've done before, except it's has by, and it produces a, uh, a Lubian, which could be done as a literal type, but yeah, flag is the mark. Very straightforward. That should so also now, be a Adam Sen, what is it, Sen F? Yeah, something like that. Um, we've, so what we haven't covered yet is read P, read S and the forward ones. We'll look at read P real quick. Cause that one's going to be easy. We say, uh, get the, apparently, yeah, we're getting the permissions. Yeah. That apply to a particular node, which is, you know, descend into the try like object and um, get out whether it's a whitelist or blacklist and produce that, the type there being a dict, which we looked at before, saying what's the path that it's about. What are the permissions there? Blacklist, whitelist. Can we only so ask about the permissions? How do, how, like, how do we keep these requests referentially transparent? Can we only ask them at the current date? This doesn't or even what? take the eon in, it appears. Um, so, uh, it's not refer not referentially transparent. Well, then we should. I mean, we should probably just limit it to current date, right? Because you can't actually ask historical queries about permissions. Yeah, you'd have to keep like a log of them. Which maybe at some point we want to do that, but uh, there's no maybe. Use for but that yeah. Right we probably don't like it's not first of course we always could track the history of everything we do right but like for most things we don't want to right like it's not yeah the I don't think for, for, really for, for permissions there's an not. argument that you might want it for auditing but that's about it yeah Yeah, I don't think it's a very strong, like, because, well, let's see, uh, I, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, it's... It, just, it doesn't seem to me to be worth you, it. You need an actual use case. Not yeah. Just like, maybe we'll want this. Right, <laughs> yeah. Um, it's like, anything that's like, maybe we'll want this in our, you know, kernel that's supposed to shrink down. and Right. You know, last forever it's like, it's like oh you want to store logs just because you might want them that's 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 fed mindset um right, yeah well, okay. we're not a vpn provider we don't have to <laughs> exactly we don't have to claim that we're not storing logs but then actually store them right yeah. so then read s produce miscellaneous this is all a hack this is pretty pretty much all be in read buck uh and it's just like well what if you have, what, what if you want to know the taco of a particular, or so the commit hash of a particular commit? You can look it up here instead of having to go find some dome or whatever and hope that it has the right data. What if you have a taco and you want to find its commit? Just look it up in the, uh, in the ring. Well, you can do that right here. Obviously, it doesn't depend on the desk or the case or anything, and it's not referentially transparent. Because well, actually, it is referenced to transparent, but it doesn't depend on anything related to this desk. That should be in read buck. Blob, same thing. Yeah. It's just getting it uh, yeah. from the other side of the commit store. Hash is uh, does does a send cz except of of a commit that you refer to by hash, which is useful if you're trying to get the send cz of something that doesn't have a revision number. Because you can have commits oh, that, that don't have revision yeah. numbers. Um, okay. Cage 
is when you want is when you have uh, the name of a lobe and you want to get a cage of it it goes through and actually calls that through forward it's 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 like read x except you don't know the name of the file you just know the lobe which is used in some like diagnostic tools i think um open is you get the you compile only the there's prelude of the function there is something weird about the like commits that don't have uh revision numbers because they do on whatever branch they or whatever desk they originally came from right yeah but you it's may just, not know anything about that desk yeah because like the one that, that you downloaded right. it from they might have got it from someone It'll else be... they might have got it from someone else you know right and we, because we refer to them by hash we don't even know where they came from necessarily yeah you it, and that's not sort of like well-defined concept in clay there's no kind of like canonical original source right right you you probably could put a canonical original source into every commit and yeah I, yeah i think we're gonna want to and for that to have a ship in it and a ship and a canonical you know scribe path yeah that's possible yeah might not do that Right. Um, then open is yeah is the prelude so it compiles all the forward runes and produces that uh, this is used by the language server so that it knows what subject to be evaluating your file against uh, I assume the language server still uses it it's another kind of weird one yeah uh, but that one actually is referentially transparent and is kind of appropriate to have like it, it shouldn't go into read buck um, Wait, but, that one? Yeah. You think that should be in Readbug? No, the, 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 that one should not be. Okay. Yeah. But that's probably the only one of these that should not be. Yeah, I mean, going through these, it, it strikes me that there's um, there's something... I feel like there's a missing, like, fstat kind of command. Yeah. You know, some yeah. sort of, like... Just grab me all of the like, like little bits of information, metadata about this file, right? Um, which could include like the Ford prelude um, and the CAS, uh, the hash. Some some of these are uh, also simpler if you um, now, now that the rang we just gave up and we're like we'll just give you the rang. Um, because then, uh, like, a lot of those can just kind of go away. Although, you have to be a little careful because are we really going to want to give everyone the ring? Or, like, there's the permissions on that have to be really tight. And so, I don't know. So what, what about, what is this about giving people the ring? Uh, so, Readbuck now has a scry for the ring for the object store. And so, um, like, taco, yaki, blob, hash, all of those, you can get just... If you just if you have the object store, so you can scry that out instead, get rid of those. I see. Yeah. The only problem is, the ring is like all your data and not everything. You know, at some point in the future, yeah, I mean, you definitely have some things will be restricted from that. that. Yeah. yeah, you only want permissions local applications to be able to read that. Right. Yeah. Um. Right. So late we handled earlier should be in read buck base. Uh, this is where you calculate a base hash, basically. I think. Yeah. So you you find the merge points. So find the most recent common ancestor, and then um, it you you produce the list of most recent common ancestors, and then. If you want the base hash, then you just run that through uh, this one, which is called which is senzz of whatever that that taco is. Um, not super important, but well, base hash is important, and yeah. it's not possible at the time to get that information without something like this. A a a, a scry that says get the um, get the merge points is actually a reasonable thing to have. 
and these are effectively yeah. transparent. Yeah. So actually, th yeah, th this one's reasonable. This is like reasonable, but kind of weird to have. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Anyways, that's the, why it's miscellaneous. The base hash one. Yeah, I wonder if they're. I wonder if they're permissioning issues here. Maybe not. For for base, there probably isn't. For hash, there, well, I mean, beyond that, you should just make sure that you can only call base if you have permissions to both sides. Yeah. Which right now, probably only checks the one side, but yeah. Yeah, I don't know. It's kind of both sides. Oh, like the both parents. You mean? Uh, both merged? yeah. So so base is saying. Um, I'm going to give you two desks, potentially on two ships, um, and tell me what's the com uh, what's their most recent common ancestor. That's the base commit, and the base hash is to take the hash of that. Yeah, so basically, the permissions for base should essentially be like, you need to have permissions on both desks. Yeah. Right, it's like an and check between this desk and the other desk, um, right. in order to see this one. And if if you if there's one of them that you can't see, then you just get a sick. Yeah, which we get so kind of close to that, because like here we we actually in, in, create a whole new decor for that other desk, uh, and give the correct. I assume that's the correct ship. I don't know. Maybe it's not. Yeah, it is the, the correct ship. And then we just read the DOM out instead of... If we called something from there, then it would go through the permissions check and it would work, I think. But Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Some cleanup to happen there. Yeah, I think we will have to rethink some of this permissioning stuff with um, encrypted scries. Right. Yeah. So be it. Yeah. But you can see it's, it's right for that. Yeah. So that's all of these, and D, and so the last ones are the Ford so what's ones. What's left? The Ford, Ford scries. Yeah, which will mostly, which we'll just look at very briefly because we'll cover Ford in another session because we're probably coming to the end of today's, I think. Um, read A's. It says build this file. Produce it as like whatever the result of building the file is, you know, if, which might be a, you know, it might be a value, it might be code, it might be whatever. It's just right. It might be a statically typed call agent that you can just yep, you know, pull out with the dojo and then mess with. Right, um, and that gets produced as as a vase. We, we give it back as a vase, but as Specifically, yeah. this this is giving it's, it. it it's, it's only it's one level of phase, or right. yeah, like so. This could be this, and it's not. Oh right, so it's two. It's two levels of. It's two levels wrapping. of wrapping. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So so that when you receive it, you know that you're receiving a vase, and you can handle it dynamically, or you can zap gal it to something if you know what it is. With read A, right. you often don't know what it is, but you might. Right, and it's just that I was thinking of... So what I was thinking of the dojo is exactly right. It's just that you can use he build file, which will use read A, and uh, right. that because and that's it, a thread that just produces the, the contained vase, and then from the dojo, dojo D vase is that, and so you get a statically right. typed dojo yes. variable. Yeah. Exactly. So we just do that here, read B, same thing, except build a dais. Um, the, so this takes in like a normal path that gets passed through. Read B expects to, uh, just one item, um, which is the mark name. So we build a dais for that mark, produce it as a dais, which you know, this is kind of a preview of looking at the Ford stuff. It, a, a dais is something that ten that like takes in vases and produces vases. 
um, as opposed to what we'll see in a minute. Yeah, so I'd say it's a, different. Yeah, you could say it's sort of like a dynamically typed mark core. Yeah. Right? So it's like the the definition of a file with a bunch of different operations, and they're all they all take in and, and output phases right. as a dais. Yeah, you, you you can use a dais without having any uh, prior knowledge of what mark you're going to be using or what the type of that mark is or anything like that. You'd just be like, oh, it's a dais. I can always use a dais. Right. Um, read C is similar, except instead of producing a dais, which is a mark core, it produces a tube, which is a mark conversion gate. Um, so it takes two arguments, the from mark and the to mark, produces a tube out of those. This has the same the same type of like, so a tube is a function from vase to vase. Read E and F are similar to B and C, except this produces a nave, which looks a lot like a dais. So here's nave and dais. Um, the difference being, for example, join, instead of taking two vases, it takes two things of the static type of diff so if you know if you when you're writing the code know what kind of of types come from this mark because you're using some static mark presumably then you can uh get an answer that doesn't have to operate in vase mode um and it you know it just becomes a nave parameterized with types which is much cleaner potentially faster in some circumstances um, but it mostly just makes your code a lot cleaner. And read F does the same thing. It's almost, it's probably easier to see what it does, uh, because the type that it produces is not, so it's, it's similar to tube, except instead of a function from vase to vase, it's a function from whatever the type of the first mark is to whatever the type of the second mark is, which is exactly the kind of thing you would expect from a uh, conversion function. And that's it. That took longer than I expected. But, uh, uh, you're muted, Ted. I don't know if you're talking, but yeah. Um, oh, I was. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was longer, but I think the read book stuff and the, these kinds of questions about preferential transparency and permissioning and uh, you know, whether it should be a try versus a map um, and the Merkleization of Sen Z. I think these are all good things to get into. Stuff I didn't, I hadn't thought about before. Yeah. Yeah, like th th this section of the code, if I had to grade it, like if you, you know, if you grade the data structures, they're B plus, A minus kind of range. Um, like there's still some questions about the object store. Maybe it shouldn't even exist at all, a few things. Um, and this code is like, you know, there's sections of really solid code, but it's it's in the C plus, B minus kind of range. Yeah, well, and given the given the level of... The number of failures of referential transparency, I think we bring yeah. that grade down quite a bit. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But none of them look that hard to solve. It, it, right. there, there, there's a, like, there's very much a flavor of this was, you know, there was some version of this that was written at some point that had it mostly referentially transparent, but not perfectly. And then uh, it's been added to in a very patchwork fashion, very, I'm trying to get something done. Uh, yeah for many many years and you know that shows yeah it's got that uh it's got that legacy system smell like an old pair of shoes yep yep <laughs> nice yep. and nice and comfy and worn in maybe got a couple holes in it. exactly yeah that's uh that's what reading looks like 
Subscriptions will be like, okay, take all that and then just extend it along another dimension. Extend that across the time dimension, approximately. And yeah. also the network dimension. Yeah. Right. Yeah, which I guess we should do in a separate episode. This one. Yeah. I thought we would get to it today, but yeah. Yeah, this one, I think this has been about as long as the previous one. Oh, really? Yeah, uh, right. yeah almost exactly. Wow. Oh, well. Hopefully some of the, I mean, like, receiving foreign data, that should be, that should be faster. I think we can do <laughs> subscriptions and receiving foreign data in one go. We'll see. Okay. Those are pretty closely related, aren't they? They are, yeah. Yeah, yeah. but, but, so but, like, that... it, you, you, like, it, it is worth thinking of subscriptions as forgetting about foreign ships, even just as, you know, your local clay has, there's right. a subscription mechanism there, and then that gets extended in another direction. Over the network, yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. yeah, I think that is a good way of thinking about it. Yep. Alrighty. Cool. I guess we'll do this next week. Next week. Yeah, looking forward to it. All right. I'll stop the recording. <laughs>